Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of this week's Master Night Nightfall, which is Sabbath and Song. We're going to be doing it on the Hunter. We're also going to get the 100k. That's not really too much of a problem when you're doing a 980. So, everything I'm using is up on the screen. We're using this Patron of Lost Causes. This one's got Osmosis on it. I haven't used Osmosis before, but I figured I need all the damage types, obviously, match games on. So, when you throw a grenade, it turns your primary it, it makes that primary whatever your subclass is until you store it so because we're on void i now have a void primary i have a, a, a solar energy and an arc heavy because i'm using the wendigo and ariana's vow i've also got a hive armaments on and hive repurposing now hive repurposing is i'll get my grenade back whenever i break a shield that also counts for the the barrier champions when i break their shield I'll, I'll just get a grenade straight back which will be really helpful for trying to keep heavy ammo uh reserves up so when we get to this area i'm going to focus on this wizard take down the wizard and then kind of back away a little bit sometimes you don't have to back away but if i'm being honest the patron's a good weapon it just it really lacks a bit of punch i've got another one that i use it's got explosive rounds on it it's actually it's actually really good. I was thinking I, I might actually farm a different one because the one I've got's got uh, full auto, which you lose a bit of your precision when you've got full auto. And even on full auto, I, I find I, I end up single firing anyway. So what, once you take out all these ads, you see the, these orbs are really important. They are quite important for the Wendigo because it increases the Wendigo's damage. So anybody that's seen my, my Sabbath and Song runs before, especially on a 980, any any kind of distance is, is is safety to a degree, and if you can if you can find a, a defendable area within a strike, it's or or any activity if you if you can find something that allows you a good angle on the ads, better safety, then that's always going to be the way you're going to go. I I don't really I'm not really a big fan of runs where. Or, or any activities where people just get themselves into trouble simply to get the kills faster. Uh, safety first, guys. Safety first every time. So, once you take down these throw, we're going to go back over to the stairs. Now, you're going to get your champions now. You want to position yourself, as you can see. When you're facing back in this area, you want to be left of the middle of the stairs. That way, the champions won't fire at you. Any closer, once you start firing they will engage another thing is obviously one of the modifiers on this week's nightfall is exploder units have more health so that the curse throw they really are tanky so be careful with them as you can see i'm using arianas to take them down now i have special ammo finder uh it's 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 pretty good i would probably go with special ammo scavenger for fu for a future run so we're just going to mop these ads up. We want to make sure there's no ads floating about. You'll always get these exploders coming from the left. Now, because we've got the uh, chafe is on, so we don't have a radar, you want to make sure that there's no exploders coming from our far left, kind of behind us. It's on, 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 the, on the kind of ridge behind us to the left. Because there's nearly always one ends up just coming up there and creeping behind you. And the last thing, it would be really frustrating to get you know a good run on this. And then one explode it creep up behind you. So I normally give it a little check. As you can see, there he is. Always give it a little check. Now I can engage the champions. Now, as you'll see here exactly what my plan is going to be. I'm going to put two shots on the champion. That that is enough to make the champion want to put the barrier up. Two shots breaks the barrier. And then I'm going to bring out the Wendigo. And try and do a heap of damage with the Wendigo. I'm not too interested in killing the champion with the Wendigo. The plan really is because I've because I've master worked my uh, my Arianas. That gives it enough time to reload because that's part of the the master work. Is that once you finish it, it auto reloads. So does the Wendigo. Really good choices here because. You don't have to waste time reloading your weapons. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fire a tether. I was a little bit. My timing was just off with that. Normally I get it 
firing just as the door opens and it will tether halfway through meaning it's easier to capture second set now to get the next set of ads you've got to go through to that entrance the one before the the the, the second the third door you've got to go into the second room so i dodge reload to get invisible luckily the ads come fast enough and my tether caught them so that's all the thrill now you've got two champions one on uh, three champions sorry one unstoppable and two barrier so what you'll see i'm doing here is i'm just putting some shots on charge them unstoppable shot now even though it's charged i'm not firing immediately because there's a cooldown on on uh how quickly you can stop the barrier the the unstoppable so i'm kind of using my uh reload masterwork as as a guide now that when when your ariana's reloads there's an audio cue to say it's done it that's what i was waiting for to hear that so i'm going to push into this right hand side now we put because we put a shot already on that barrier that's why there wasn't a lot left to put on now this is going to be a theme that's the way i'm going to attack the barrier champions but as you'll see here i'm going to dodge reload to get to the next guy now, what I'm normally doing is I'm getting a good fire on, and then once I break the shield, I move. Once I engage for the shield, I'm moving, because they won't stop firing at you. So they'll they, when when they go into fire, they'll fire at your position. You want to change slightly position between actually registering your first two shots. And then breaking the barrier, so so you're going to fire two shots and then slightly move position to get out of the way of that shot. Then they're going to put the barrier up. You're going to fire two shots, then move back to the original position. You'll avoid both their cannon shots, their boomer shots. So we've got four elite uh, acolytes here, as you can see. I'm just going to. Put, I tried to put that in between them, and that's obviously the Wendigo has the the intrinsic ability at a. Uh, it has blinding grenades so headshots with the arianas normally fixes these guys out but as you can see i didn't bother with that i uh i just hit that last one with a wendigo so this is the first there's a couple of choke points there's a couple of places in this strike that i anticipated being problematic this is one of them because you've got a champion and you've also got the shrieker void damage is amplified as is environmental damage so i didn't really want to be con contesting both of them together now i done about now I, ha I have to let you guys know exactly what i mean by this because i don't really like it when when i see people making content saying oh this was really easy this isn't really easy as you can see just just explanation there i threw my grenade it has changed my primary to avoid primary which is really good because there's actually more void in this strike than anything else. And especially on the 980 because they've converted all the Arc, nearly all the Arc Knights bar one. All the Arc Knights now are champions. So I didn't really want to contest, contest this champion. So what I've done is I've just took the orb just to get them to come out. And I'm going to take these, uh, take some of these acolytes before I, I go after the, the champion. Now, as you can see, it's the exact same way. I'm trying to move left to right between the shots to dodge. Now, I'm going to explain something about the Wendigo in a minute, just so that you guys don't think that I'm an absolutely hopeless shot with the Wendigo. I was kind of expecting the Wendigo's fire rate to be like a hand cannon, because it bounces when it fires. What I know now, it does bounce when it fires, but it doesn't come back down. So you have to manually readjust your aim every time you fire. So be be careful that be aware of that the Wendigo is a very good weapon. It just it just needs to be mo used right. So as you can see there, I took the champion from back down at the bottom of the stairs. What I was doing by going left and right after I took the champion was making sure there were no acolytes left, and then straight up get the orb, jump behind one of those blast walls, dodge reload to get your invisibility, and then slam, and you're good. So when we come down here, you know in this section we're going to have some acolytes and a champion. If I remember rightly, I think there's five acolytes and a champion. Again, two of them are going to rush, try and get close. Sometimes three do. 
they'll always be two up by the champion. We're gonna use the grenade to kind of take out the take out the, the the acolytes. So there's one. There's two. And is there a third? There is a third. Who is now doing R B freestyle dance moves? So now we're gonna put a grenade up on top of these guys and try and get a little bit of heavy. It's always good to go into this next area with a decent bit of heavy. So again, one. Now we're going to use a shot to take out that acolyte. And then we'll break the shield, move out the way. We're anticipating the anticipating that second shot. And as you, as you can probably see, what i done was I moved out the way, just trying to not be in the same position I'm firing from but I'm 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 timing it two shots two shot two shots move two shots move and then you know by the time you've hit hit the Wendigo if you can hit your shots you shouldn't have too much of a problem now you can see what I tried to do there outside this area this is this is never one of my choke point areas because I've I think I've got a really good bead on how to do this I tried to throw the grenade down because we know that we've got a bunch of acolytes and a champion just over this ledge, just on ground level. So when you come out, when you when that door opens, I'm standing on this box here. Standing on this box stops the acolytes. It's just far enough away that it stops the acolytes from throwing their solar bombs in here. So we're going to take this. What normally happens is this ogre will allow you to get one or two shots and then it'll go into cover. And just get a tether on here. Uh... And it'll go into cover. Take out this champion. Two shots. Two shots. And then Wendigo. Same. It's going to be the same routine every time. And then we, we're hand cannons reloaded. And we're good. So we'll put a, cut, a grenade down there. Just try and see if we can get any kills with the grenade. There we go. And that gives us some heavy back. So what will happen is you get two shots on the ogre. The ogre will go in into cover so i used my primary just to shoot the ogre's arm just try to bring him back out and when he comes back out if you can land enough headshots on him in a row he won't go back into cover you've already you know it's it, I, over the years i've worked out that it's a damage thing he'll go come go in and out of cover based on how much damage he's taken now there's a bunch of acolytes all around here but what we've tried to do is just move far enough to the right that the champion sees that we're over here and the champion and a couple of acolytes will come to you so we'll try and take as many of these acolytes we don't want these solar bombs coming in there we go there's another one and there's the champion so two shots and as you can see i'm trying to move out the way of the impending boomer shot and that's some good shots landed there just readjust your wendigo aim you know it's, it's kind of as the way to use the wendigo readjust your wendigo aim just bring it back down slightly and you'll land in the same place so that's the champion in this area uh there's a, a an arc knight over on the other side we've took all we managed to take all the acolytes normally there'll be some acolytes with them so what we're going to do is land a wendigo shot it breaks his shield and then put, bring out the right weapon now we've got another roger now when we put some damage on this other roger then you're going to get the second wave of ads which in includes two uh arc knights now you've got to be really careful when firing this because as you can see you can't withstand a lot of the the damage fr from from the ogres because of the void so we'll just put some smoke down slow down this this night now what i'm trying to do you can see here I'm trying to use my repurposing to my advantage and try and get some heavy. And it worked. So what I done there was fired the Wendigo, broke the shield, threw the grenade on the 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 knight with the broken shield, and then switched back to Wendigo, broke the second knight shield, which gave me another grenade. You know? Now there will be a point cut uh in in the in the in the run and I'll, I'll, obviously i will point it out when it happens but i'll give you guys a heads up there's a couple of points there's a clutch point at the end if i'm being honest but there's a couple of points in the run where i literally just farm farm the shield of the champion 
for grenade. So, you know, I'll pre prepare you guys for that. That's a really good way, especially if you're running out of heavy. Go into the menagerie, do your three powerfuls, try and get your hive mods. You know, it's kind of the way to do it. Uh, but it's they're so helpful in any of the any of the hive strikes, hive repurposing. It's no good for pet heresy because there are no shields to break in the pet heresy. But it's really good for anything like the Savathans. It's very, very good. Now, that this ogre will always go around there. So we're just going to quick fire, get a couple of grenade, uh, grenades on him. He will then move up the stairs. I'll try and hit him a couple of times. Just be, be careful because you've seen how much damage he can do. There we go. Now, there could still, still be some acolytes up here. So be careful. You know, if you're confident there isn't, then... Fair enough, but you'll normally drop quite a bit of ammunition when you come up here. The first choke point is after this one. This is why I, I, I actually thought from, from after this part here, when we go out the other side, I figured there might be an issue. Uh, and it turned out it wasn't easy, but it wasn't as bad as I, I thought. And the reason why is because, as I was saying about how many runs I'd done, I got cut off because of the situation. I count a run as halfway through this because if you go halfway through a strike, then that's that's counted for me as a run. Some of them are exploratory, you know, you're testing a strategy at a certain point. This this part here was the one that got me the most. So as you can see, I'm going to go to that plant pot, dodge, reload, to get up here without the ads knowing where I am. Two shots, two shots, and as you can see, I'm moving, and then some good Wendigo shots finishes that champion off no one a le level pegging you know no no it's not too bad you've got one champion really in your in your your eye line just take out some of these acolytes now, as you can see one two and a third and then two to break the shield now this one it was a little bit more awkward I had to readjust after the first shot but we got it now that that's that's the difficult part. That part of this little section that's the difficult part because you've got two barrier champions, really in close proximity. You can end up with a situation. You can end up with a situation where they where they actually if they get too close they'll shield each other. But more so, you're going to end up in a situation where they're both going to be firing at you. So as you can see, we throw a tether, and just the act of throwing the grenade changed my primary as i've said osmosis and what that does now break this shield no it's i don't really like firing the wendigo from that kind of range but as you can see really good shots now we just take out the acolyte so yeah by by firing by by uh throwing your grenade you change you change your 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 weapon because of osmosis i've already explained that but the po the reason why i felt it was really important here well really this the savathan's kind of in, in a league of its own uh because it's one of the few nightfalls that really has a big spread of of energies you've got a couple of you know what what about four four five four four solar wizards you've got seven void and then you've got arc knights so you have to cover all the damages it's too much to ask unless you're on a, a warlock it's too much to ask to really regenerate the the amount of grenades you're going to need so again once once you once you've once you've uh fin done this this section we're going to a couple of explodes but what we're going to do with this section is I'm not really bothered about the orb. This isn't a time thing. You know, I'm not trying to do this quickly. I'm trying to do it safely. You know, because if I can do this safely, it can be repeated. Repeatable strategies. As, as I keep getting told, that's one of my tag words. And it is, because I, I believe that if you're going to watch somebody do a piece of content, you want you want to see them doing it pretty much flawlessly because then it gives everyone else a little bit of hope so as you can see we've done the champion same way i'm going to throw that grenade i was looking to see where there's always three acolytes over there i was looking to see where 
the two if there were two together you know more chance of getting those grenade kills so there's a couple of acolytes down here and a champion now, this boy here is our this is the last barrier champion before the boss so a couple of wendigo shots and then finish him off with arianas now once you take out that champion there won't be any ads past that champion you have to go up here you have to bring the orb down to get the next wave of ads to come out next wave of ads unfortunately is three unstoppables and a heap of acolytes and probably the part in this strike probably i would probably go as far as to say the part in any strike where most solo players expect to die you know we're going to put a tether down now we need to charge this and uh, we've stopped them and we're going to hit them with some wendigo shots and then run away and we'll run far enough away because the, there was more than one unstoppable coming at us so charge that unstoppable shot we know there's another one so that's why i wasn't i was kind of peeking so finish him off we might have to go invisible and get out of here he won't come outside so as you can see i went invisible got myself into a decent bit of cover now we can stop him and finish him with the arianas now there's there are two more unstoppables now we've already damaged one quite considerably and as you can see the orb's gone that's fine we're not worried about carrying the orb with us expressly so we'll stop him put some ariana shots on he's close to being dead so watch out for these traps as well because there's nothing worse than getting trapped in those and there we go so we've got one unstoppable left this there is some acolytes here we're going to try and get maybe a, at least one grenade kill because that's really the one grenade kill is all you need to get to get a, a, a bunch of heavy so the unstoppable the final one is in the room with the shriekers you just want to make sure there's no acolytes kind of encroaching because acolytes acolytes are a nightmare that they they really do they really do uh present a real problem with the hiding because they they're not like i'll stand behind this pillar you can see my arm they proper get into cover luckily for us the unstoppable that we put all the damage on was the one that decided to go and hide so i always do that i always once once i've practically cleared the area inside that room with the shriekers i explode that uh exploding kind of canister if it, if i get any hit markers from around the area i know there's still acolytes in there now what we're going to do here because like i've said in a, of, of every strike in the game this is the one place where it's almost acceptable to die now because of the damage because we're on a 980 i'm not wanting to die here because where it spawns you can be re really dangerous so what we're going to do is just check the area make sure there's no acolytes now what i'm doing is i'm shooting next to the cover where the acolytes would be because if you do that and there's ads there 90 percent of the time they will uh they'll come out to investigate now what i done was i moved away moved away from the open door gave myself a run and start i dodged into the door and as i was dodging I grabbed I grabbed the orb again so that I could quickly make it make it out the door get into this cover and as you can see I'm getting my dodge back quite quickly dodge slam we're good and we've got heavy down here which is good so we'll do a little scoot as you can see we're good for points you know you get 25 minutes in a master nightfall to score points and then after the 25 minutes up to the 30 minutes you score points at 50 percent but you lose is it what 10 15 points a second it's not it's not much so as you can see we've got a couple of void here it's changed our weapon to void which is good now i've changed but it's cool because i got my grenade back and we've killed one of the one of the wizards so now we'll throw now this wizard really really went all out to get out the way of that grenade don't the other thing I noticed 
uh, and, and is 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 when you're when you've got the orb when you're doing this when you're when you're throwing your your grenade to get proc osmosis. If you pick your if you've got the orb with you at the same time, and you pick up the orb, it will cancel it. Will, it you've stored your weapon. So make sure when you get to that point. Now I didn't find that out until we were doing this. So I'll throw a little grenade because I'm, as you can see, got my grenade straight back because I threw it. Try get try and get a little bit heavy. I threw it because I knew I was going to break this wizard shield. Because, and I, this is something I will say. I'll throw another grenade because we know we can get it back because the wizard. Is shielded. I'll just take some of these exploder units out. This one pushed me. Wasn't expecting it to come so close. I was. I wasn't expecting to miss that much either. I find that the thrall, whether it be the cursed thrall or normal thrall, there can be a real pain in the in the you know what. Uh, simply because they're they're quite they're quite glitchy, you know. It's like the t it's like it's like it's like taking of the taking throw of just exaggerated their movements. So for anybody that played D one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now we put we put enough damage on the wizard maybe that she's went. Normally she waits for us in this room, and so let's talk about the boss. It's quite obvious what I'm doing here. I am literally just clearing this section of ads. The boss, the idea is we're going to have to play the boss through all the phases because it's a 9 -8. We don't have the weapons to be able to melt the boss. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bunch of uh, Wendigo shots on the boss to get the boss to move, to get the, the, the Shrieker to move to its second location. When it goes into its second location, we kind of really want we really want to uh, uh, we really want to make it move as fast as possible. That's kind of the plan. We want we want it to move. We want we want it to close up to go into its hibernation state. So we'll put. We'll get over here. This is going to be our point of attack. So once we get it to move the first time, you're going to get some throw. So a couple of couple of fast shots. Try and try and get the the streaker to move as fast as possible. There we go. Now we're going to get some throw. So we'll throw a grenade down, which will help us get more heavy. Now we have to be careful because the throw up. They're an, they are a nightmare. As you can see, I'm just trying. I'm trying to listen. No, I'm trying to just make sure I'm getting those shots. But as you can see, I'm maybe a bit low. It's not worth just spamming from here. What uh, you'll see here, I'm firing three shots. I was. I wasn't really confident that I was hitting, so now I'm just going to do some single shots with the Ariana. There we go. Now what we've got is we've got the full wave of ads. There will still be some... We only killed a couple of thrall. So there will still be some thrall. Right on cue. And you want to take them down as fast as possible. Because the worst thing to have is to, th to have those thrall kind of running about. And at attacking you at times where you're, you're trying to engage and clear these acolytes. Now... As you can, because as you can see, the champions are going to put enough damage on you. We can see a couple of those throw up top. We want them to push us. That is not a very good grenade, simply because I've got <laughs> I've got a uh, fastball on, which means I'm going to throw it for miles. So again, you'll see here. This is why I'm, I say about moving. Now I'm attacking this champion from here, because anywhere else I'm too out in the open. But even here. I'm just going to struggle with this champion. So put a shot on, move, change position, and take him down. And then get out, get dodge reload, get any cover, let your health come back. Now what we're going to do, because we want some heavy, is we're going to farm this next champion. Because, because we've got invigoration on, every time we break his shield, uh, we're going to get our grenade back. Now, 
As you can see, I've got heavy there. The grenade literally just has to kill one enemy. But I kind of luck out here a little bit. So I'll, I'll explain how that happens. So shield up, break the shield, get my grenade back. I luck out because I actually dropped quite a few bricks of heavy here without needing the, without actually needing the grenade. But we're going to pick off some of these ads because I'm taking too much, too much incoming fire. I pick off some of these because they are super annoying with those void kind of, those solar grenades. Sorry. Uh, so we're just going to the ones that are kind of hiding at the back. No, let's speak about a little bit. I'm going to farm this uh, champion for one more grenade. Now, let's speak a little bit about the next section. And what's going to happen is, once we clear these ads, we're going to push up to the position where the, the, the Shrieker is now. And we're going to get... The Shrieker's going to move into the centre. We're going to track, We're going to put it down as fast as possible. And it's going to go up to the back. But when it moves into the centre, once it moves again, we're going to get thrown. So we have to be careful... Because the th we don't have a radar, and the thrall are, uh, the, they're not like, if you can if you can see them coming, they're not too difficult to avoid. You know, they're quite easy to kill, so as you can see, we're going to dodge reload to get more invisibility and collect some of this ammo. As you can see, I did drop a few bricks of heavy. And then we're going to put some grenades up on the, the shrieker. Get him to move, and as soon as that happened, I threw a grenade, try and get a kill, and I think you get like six or eight here, so you get two sets coming from the right, and then you'll get some from the left. And in fact, there actually, might actually be more than that. Now, I would suggest not taking the chances that I took here. That thrall, when it hit me, it knocked me out and out of cover, so just a little dodge reload. Just to get out, of, so I can get a look around. As you can see, so that's that should be the last of the throne now. So we're gonna, we're not gonna waste any more Ariana, uh, any more Wendigo. So know what you've got. It's the Shriek has moved up top. We know what you've got is we're gonna have a whole host of acolytes. No. Just for your information, sometimes they will target you with solar bombs, which is why I would suggest not engaging the acolytes, just staying in this position, kind of head glitching this the shrieker, because as long as you do that, they don't seem to pepper bomb you as much. As you can see, they're missing, so I'll throw a grenade over at the back, and then... When it comes to these acolytes, always try and prioritize those ones right at the front, right in this middle section, because that's where your incoming solar grenade uh, annoyances will come from. Is that just that m middle section? As soon as they come up there, they're, they're getting ready to throw. The other thing we've got to deal with is three unstoppables. Now, the, as long as you're here where I am now, you, you're in no danger from the unstoppables. My suggestion is, and it's exactly what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one on the left, which will then be replaced by another unstoppable to the left. And then that leaves one up. I would then probably use that time when that last one is exactly what I'm going to do. Use that time. As you can see, we're going to go down here, get some special. I would use that time to go and get a little bit of heavy, but... See what ammo you've got. Now we're just looking for more acolytes. We I mean, know there's still a few of them up. I would use that time, you know, do a, do a scout about. But when you do that scout about, make sure that you do it while you're invisible. Try and get into cover before you go invisible because that's kind of how invisibility works. It doesn't matter if you're out in the open and then go invisible. You're still pretty easy to track. So kind of the idea is to go invisible whilst you are already out of the view. So we know that there's another acolyte up there, but it's kind of staying in cover. So we're going to do a little bit of work on this unstoppable over here. Now, as you can see, I tried to get a couple of really fast shots at the end there. I wouldn't suggest doing that. It's worthwhile 
just plugging away and hitting your crits. As you can see, I hit my crits, done a lot more damage with less shots. So be, you know, make sure that you're uh, you're prioritizing critical hits with the Arianas. It's worth practicing it. It's, it, I, I suppose it would be no different than any any of the other uh, high recoil, high damage weapons. It's kind of you've got to kind of ignore the the reticle and just learn the bounce, learn learn its pattern. So we've come over here just to make sure that there's no more acolytes kind of hiding so we're going to stop put an unstoppable round on that ogre so we can get back into position as i say when you're up here you're safe i know i've got more energy up here now what we're going to do is we're going to take this unstoppable from here when ariana appears again we are going to put some shots on on ariana from where it is at the moment and then when it comes into the center, we'll, we'll want to put it into its cocoon state. So as you can see, there goes the unstoppable straight up to the straight up to Savathun. And then switch. And then we might have to dodge and get another reload. Now as you can see here, this is the first of clutch moments. I got hit. By two of those that nearly killed me. Now, what to say about that? I'm going to put down a grenade here and try and get a little bit of heavy. This is where it gets a little bit clutch. It's not like super clutch. I'm not. I, I never felt like you know there are moments like this where you think you're going to die. I didn't feel like that here. I felt like I, all I I knew what I had to do to get control again. Which is not be attacked by multiple furl. So basically now what we're doing is we're waiting for a grenade. Because we need to proc osmosis. Now what you will see here. Just take the last. Be aware because obviously chafe's on. So you're not, you don't have you don't have that uh, radar. What I didn't know here coming up is when, when, you, when you pick the orb up. It counts as if you've stored your weapon. So you lose osmosis, which is quite annoying. So when we get this grenade, we're going to throw it. We're going to break the, the first wizard shield, which will give us another grenade back. So we'll throw it. Dodge reload to get out the way. And take out the first the wizard. And we got our grenade back. So now what we've got to do is go up and get that orb to bring the second two wizards out. Everything from here is dictating our actions it's it's kind of hard to be proactive because we just have to follow the the routine of things there's still some thrall up i need to kill those thrall i cannot get into position uh until those thrall are dead that actually takes longer than anything else now you'll see what's going to happen here i'm gonna i'm just gonna throw my grenade try and hit the wizard which i don't and then pick that up and lost osmosis I didn't realize that done that. So what we're going to do is we've got to wait for the grenade. And I'm going to drop the grenade up to my left so it doesn't roll away. Annoying, but, you know, we know we know how that works now. So let's, let's speak about what we're going to do at the boss. Now, the boss is clutch. Because the Wendigo is a very good weapon, but it needs charged grenades to be good. And I'm not sure I've got many. So what's... The, the routine of it is going to be, I, I need to take down these two wizards. There's two thralls still up that I need to kill because I need to get as close to Savathun's position as possible for going invisible and going up and slamming. When we slam, we then have to kill, we have to kill Savathun from on the platform simply because we don't, we're not going to have any invisibility. So... You know, with no hope of getting off that platform with, with avoid damage. No hope of getting off that platform whatsoever. So, we need to kill Savathun from up there. And that's, I understand uh, how how everything works with, uh, with the mods and why, why Bungie have done this. But I still feel like it's really restrictive. I mean, it does make decision making 
more it prioritizes it a bit more and i know that people you know i done it myself i mean i i, I beat uh strange terrain as a nightfall in five minutes you shouldn't be able to do that so i understand why they've done it i just feel like it's maybe it's this season's season pass uh, artifact it's not it's not as good as last season's but oppressive darkness went a long way to making last season's a very 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 strong artifact so and the reason i'm making these comments is i'm not trying to pour any kind of you know throw any shade or any salt at bungie i understand why they've they've done what they've done i just feel like uh Part and part of the reason why I chose the weapons I chose is because I needed Ark Soul Avoid. Because it's not just that you've got champions. It's not just that you've got, uh, you know, uh, a difficult a difficult thing. You've also got match game on. And you have to use certain weapons for the champions. The Wendigo is a very good heavy. It's a very good Ark heavy. It's just... And you'll see here how close this is. I could have really nearly died here. There's no two ways about it. So we're going to wait for a Sabbath and stop firing. Dodge against this. That's why I'm trying to put myself up against something I can dodge up against. And then... Now we dodge, grab the orb. Now we've only got a couple of seconds to get up here. I almost... You know, you really do almost die just getting hit. Switch to the Wendigo, and I'm going to put a whole clip of Wendigo, and that kills that kills Savathun. As you can see, I was trying to trying to dodge. I reckon if I'd have needed to, I I got my reload in time. I could have fired another couple of shots. But that's the run, guys. I hope that helps you. I hope you enjoyed the run and little bits of information that I tried to pass over. Uh, let me know what you think about in the comments. If you think this deserves a like, I would surely appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.